Hello and welcome to another Harsh Noise Gear Review. I am here today with the Harsh Noise Wall Machine Module from Gen Thals. This is a Eurorack module, 12 HP wide, 3U tall, and uh, it is what Gen Thals calls an analog dissonance generator. This is a... F Technically, it's a... It's got an oscillator. It's got a bunch of ways to feed back into itself. And it's also kind of a fuzz. Uh, and a compressor, and a filter, and a wave shaper. It's kind of wild. Uh, uh, so what we're going to do in this video is first, I'm going to let you hear what it sounds like. Gorgeous. It makes, uh, it's a dynamic noise machine, but it, 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 it is designed to make harsh noise wall. And I think the best way to use it is like, yeah, it can be used by itself, but the best way to use it is with its five CV inputs, uh, audio input and its audio outputs patched because why not? Uh, anywho, I'm going to go over the features of this thing. Then I'm going to start patching and demonstrating some of the features. Then we're going to build some crazy wild noise patches and do some weird stuff with it. Uh, yeah, so starting off, it uh, the way the signal path works is there's two overall modes. There's no input mode and uh, like mix mode with this cent central switch. Now... Um, first, I'm going to talk about mix mode. Mix mode mixes an oscillator, which is this switch here and this knob here. The oscillator either is high, low, or off, which creates additional noise. And those three are controlled by this tune knob here. Let's hear what it sounds like. So those are the three oscillators, and I mostly messed with the the tune knob because that changes the pitch of the oscillator. And uh, then there's the mix knob over here, which is all the way left is just the oscillator, all the way right is just the audio input. In the middle, it mixes the two. Now, we had no audio input, so it didn't really make that much of a difference as long as this knob wasn't all the way to the right. Because if it's, let's say, if it's like here. But then we rotate it. No real effect. Because there's no audio input. But we'll get to that in a second. So the mix knob mixes uh, that and audio input. Actually, let's go ahead and run a contact microphone into it. That is going to be high gain from the... Uh, there's a contact mic in this Eurorack case. So I'm going to tap on it to create sound. And we should be able to hear that.
but you see as I turn that up, the oscillator comes in. Yeah, very cool. So that's what the mix section does. Um, then, uh, I'm, first I'm going over, I'm going to be going over the knobs and switches, then we'll get into the jacks. And But the overall architecture of the thing, right. Um, so what happens is this oscillator and the audio input get mixed, then they go through the, the tone knob which is basically like think of this like a filter knob on a rat it is uh it's a it's a low pass filter it um yeah low pass filter After it passes through the low pass filter, then it goes to the contour, which changes the overall contour and shape of the uh, sound. This is like a powerful knob, let me show you. Very cool. Then after the contour knob, it goes to the compressor. And the compressor uh, compresses, well, it, it's, it's a compressor. It's built in and it has an indicator light right there, the red indicator light, the more it compresses. Let's have a listen. Notice that when you add the compression, it mildly decreases the volume, but not by that much. And then you can just turn it up a little bit later. This knob, this knob, a little out of order. This knob is the shaper. And the shaper uh, shapes the, uh, the uh, oscillator. Um, and it goes, for, it's a wave shaper. It goes from clean all the way to crazy dirty on the right, but it's kind of subtle. It works a lot better when you patch it for CV uh, in the shaper knob, in the shaper jack. Uh, yeah, but we'll give a quick demo of that. <laughs> subtle but important um let's see what's last uh the oh then after the sound goes through the compressor it then goes into the panning knob which uh figures out where to send the sound let's have a listen oh it has this indicator light too and we have a left and right output and then there's also the core output which is just like another output that's not that doesn't go through the pan uh, section. Then we have the harsh 
uh, switch, which uh, is basically like this is the fuzz circuit, and it's either mild or I think it's the fuzz circuit. Don't quote me on that. Um, but it's connected to it, and it's either mild or like totally fuzzed out beyond belief. Let's give it a listen. Oh, and it also has its own input, which is great and very reactive. You know what? Let's mix that uh, contact mic back in. Very cool. And then the last thing I'm going to uh, talk about before the jacks is the upside of the switch, which I didn't talk about earlier, which is uh, no input mode, which there's three ways to do no input on this that are all technically no input, but they all generate sound in a different way. One of them is oscillator empty. As opposed to as opposed to oscillator high or oscillator low, oscillator empty is one no input method. But then there's then there's this switch where when you flip it up, it disconnects the mix section and it just generates sound based on high gain and impedance Im impedance. Um it so it disengages when you flip this switch up, it disengages the audio input, the mix knob the tone knob and the tone switch and instead generates noise just from high gain in the rest of the system. Uh, let's give it a listen. And then the last way you can do no input, I'll just show you this now, is obviously core out into audio input in, turn it all the way to the external in, turn it down, turn that off. Let's give it a listen. Well, let's, I'll show you, I'll take this out and then I'll plug it in. We'll have see the difference. Now that's a feedback loop. Let's mix in the oscillator.
think that's I think that's gorgeous. Yeah, I think that's gorgeous. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, I, I just want to go over every output and input just because I didn't. So the harsh has has uh, an input jack. The shaper has an input jack. The tone has an input jack. The tune has an input jack. Oh, these are all for CV or whatever you want. There, and there's the audio input for the mix section. Then there's the pan input, which pans left, right, and adjusts that. And then there's the core output and the left and right output. Um, and I think that's it for the features. Now I want to um, show you what running some stuff into it is like. So let's, uh, I've got an LFO going here, which is just a slow, uh, what's that? It looks like a, it looks like a sine wave or a triangle, slow, slow triangle right here. I'm going to molt it so you can see it right there. And then let's run this into some places. See what it sounds like running an LFO into some CV. Now I should note this is a bipolar uh, LFO, pl plus five, negative five. Shaper sounds cool on its own, and the the instructions. The manual did say that the middle of the shaper knob is the sweet spot for CV, and I can see that because look. No response. Heavy response. No response. So let's leave it here. Let's um. Let's increase the LFO speed. You know what? Let's actually turn it into a VCO. Turn it from a low frequency oscillator into a voltage controlled oscillator creating audio. So let's give that a shot. now we're sending an audio rate let's slow it down turn it down let's hear what it sounds like so that's just our VCO let's get it affecting stuff ooh okay running audio into the harsh sounds cool
but I'm going to do something funky real quick. Uh, so this oscillator is a linear FM oscillator, so I'm going to make it FM itself to give us a crazy sound, hopefully. Let's see what it sounds like. There we go. So we've got a crunchy oscillator now. Let's run that into a... Yeah. fun let's run a t -t 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 triggered envelope uh let's see what number is that one e2 on the disting which i'll eventually review it's just not as exciting as the harsh noise wall machine to be honest so here is our trigger input. So every time I speak louder than that, the or tap it, let me just make it so that I, yeah, when I tap it, it sends a clock or it sends an envelope. Yeah, there's a nice envelope right there. Let's hear what it sounds like. Let me molt it again. So
Okay, and instead of a envelope, let's try a... Instead of a triggered envelope, let's just try an envelope out from an envelope follower from the contact microphone. Work similarly. I'm just like rubbing the side of the box. Let's try it with the uh with the audio. Oh yeah, now I'm just scraping that side of the box. Try with a no input. Yeah. Just give him the scent a little scritchy scratch. For my last trick, I am going to um, kind of show you how I might use this in a like actual wall uh, of my own creation right now. So what I'm going to do to make this a little more complex and a little more atmospheric and ambient, I'm going to run it through some reverb. I'm going to run it right next door through clouds and we're going to adjust clouds so that it's just reverb and uh where is my other little cable so clouds over here which i'm going to do a review of uh, as well for harsh noise is just a um it's a granular synth reverb delay type thing. It's pretty popular, more well known. I'm just gonna be using it for reverb, so let's give it a listen. And again, if I had no reverb, it would sound like that. So let's give it a little bit. Okay, let's make a wall here. I like the way that the no input sounds, so I'm going to run the core out into the in and the tuning. Yeah. Then I'm going to run... Also, 
the core out. Into a malt so I can do more things with it. I'm just going to do a big no input patch. I like that. machine. Arch noise wall forever. Alright. Thank you everyone. That has been um, the Harsh Noise Wall Machine by Jen Thals. This is the Harsh Noise Gear Review and um, I hope you learned something about this really cool instrument and uh, comment down below if you have any questions. What if you want to see this in future videos and uh, don't forget to check out Jen Thals' site in the description. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.